Over 20 years after he last played in an NFL game, Dan Marino's name still commands respect and admiration. Marino spent 17 seasons with the Miami Dolphins, rewriting the record books and putting up numbers that are still, even by today's standards, phenomenal. Marino was a nine-time Pro Bowler and three-time first-team All-Pro. He won over 61% of his regular season starts. He led the league in passing yards five times and touchdown passes three times. He led the Dolphins to the playoffs ten times, and yet, as everybody knows, he never won a Super Bowl. How is it that a player so phenomenal, the most important position, never won a single Super Bowl? This video tries to explain why. Enjoy. Marino fell in the 1983 draft until the 27th pick, where the defending AFC champion Miami Dolphins and Hall of Fame coach Don Shula snatched him up. Marino began his rookie season on the bench behind incumbent starter David Woodley, but it took only five games before Marino became the starter in place of the ineffective Woodley. Marino would go on to have one of the best rookie seasons in any NFL history, throwing for 20 touchdowns and 6 interceptions in just 9 starts. The Dolphins finished the year 12-4 thanks to a stout defense and Marino's precision passing. They got a first round bye and played the Seattle Seahawks at home in the divisional round. In his first ever playoff game, Marino was solid, not spectacular, throwing 2 touchdowns but also 2 interceptions. However, he led Miami on a touchdown drive to take a 3 point lead with 4 minutes left. Then bad luck struck. After his defense gave back the lead with a touchdown with a minute 15 left, kick returner Fulton Walker fumbled the ball back to Seattle, setting them up with a field goal to make it a 27-20 game. Then Walker fumbled again on Seattle's next kickoff, ending the game for good. Miami committed five turnovers on the day, two interceptions from Marino, and three other fumbles. It sounds strange to say about a rookie quarterback, but 1983 was probably the most complete Dolphins team Marino ever had in terms of ground support and defense. Defensive support. In terms of missed opportunities in the Marino era, 1983 is way up there. If Dan Marino was ever going to win a ring, 1984 would have been the year. His 1984 season is legendary and without question a top five season ever by a quarterback. Marino led the league in every positive statistic you can think of, and he did so putting up numbers that even in 2020 are ridiculous. 5,084 yards and 48 touchdowns with a 108.9 passer rating. It wasn't just the individual success though. The Dolphins finished 14-2 and and had the best offense in the league, scoring at least 28 points in 16 of 19 games. They earned the one seed in the AFC and destroyed both the Seahawks and Steelers in the divisional round and AFC Championship game. Marino was particularly dominant in the AFC Championship game against his hometown Steelers, who famously passed him up in the 1983 draft. He threw for 421 yards and four touchdowns in a 45-28 round. Unfortunately for Marino, Marino and the Dolphins, their Super Bowl opponent would be the 15-1 juggernaut San Francisco 49ers, led on offense by future Hall of Fame coach Bill Walsh and future Hall of Fame quarterback Joe Montana, and on defense by future Hall of Famer Ronnie Lott, in addition to many other very good players. The game started out well for Marino and the Dolphins, taking a 10-7 lead after one quarter, but then the roof caved in. The 49ers' well-oiled machine dominated from that point on, particularly in the second quarter, scoring 21 unanswered to take a commanding 28-10 lead before the Dolphins added two field goals to go into halftime down 28-16. The second half was more of the same, with the 49ers getting constant pressure on Marino, sacking him four times while the Dolphins' defense was unable to slow down the dinking and dunking 49ers offense. The final score was 38-16 49ers. Montana won Super Bowl MVP after putting up 331 passing yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions through the air, and 59 yards in one touchdown on the ground. The 49ers also controlled the clock, having the ball for 37 minutes compared to just 23 for Miami. Marino's final stat line was not very good, one touchdown and two interceptions with a 66.9 passer rating, but as what would be the case for most of his career, a lot of his playoff interceptions came when his team was already down a ton and he was trying to force throws. This would end up being the only Super Bowl appearance of Marino's illustrious career, and unlike fellow one-and-done Super Bowl quarterbacks Aaron Rodgers and Drew Breeze, he was unable to cash in on his loan opportunity. Dan Marino was once again named first team All Pro in 1985 after throwing for 4,137 yards and 30 touchdowns, both leading the league. And he's famously the only quarterback to defeat the vaunted 1985 Chicago Bears. Marino took a noticeable step back statistically from his legendary 1984 season, duh. But the Dolphins' offense was still potent, finishing fourth in points per game and finishing with a 12 4 record to earn another first round bye. By this point, 
point, however, the defense was starting to see signs of slippage, going from first in points per game allowed in Marino's rookie year, to seventh in 1984, to twelfth in 1985. Still, everybody expected Miami to return to the Super Bowl, especially after Marino led a furious 18-point second-half comeback in a 24-21 win against the Cleveland Browns in the divisional round. The Dolphins' AFC Championship game opponent would be the wild-card New England Patriots, who had already given Miami two difficult showdowns in the regular season. Despite this, everybody was expecting a rematch of Miami-Chicago in Super Bowl XX, but instead they got a New England blowout. The Patriots ended up shocking the Dolphins in the Orange Bowl by a score of 31-14. The Dolphins committed a season-high six turnovers, giving the Patriots pristine field position all game long. Much like the 49ers the year before, the Patriots dominated the time of possession 40 minutes to 20, and also racked up 255 yards on the ground. Marino had a subpar day, throwing two touchdowns and two interceptions on 48 attempts, most of which once again came when his team was down big. While his teammates committed four fumbles to shut down any chance the team had of closing the gap on the scoreboard. It was a total team failure, and Marino is not absolved of blame, but as it turns out, this would be the last time for a while the Dolphins would get anywhere near this far again. 1986 saw Marino get named first team all pro for the third straight year. He had another ridiculous season, throwing for 4,746 yards and 44 touchdowns, although he did add 23 interceptions. Still, the Dolphins finished first in points per game, but finished just 8-8 eight and eight and missed the playoffs due to their poorest defense, which finished 26th out of 28 teams in points per game allowed. The defense allowed 50 points twice and 30 plus points in 7 of 16 games. The team still might have been able to get a wild card spot if not for a brutal 51 to 45 overtime loss to the Jets early in the year and a 34-27 loss in the last week of the season to the Patriots where they blew 7 point fourth quarter leads in both games. Marino had several bad performances and losses but his offense was the only thing keeping the Dolphins above water. No pun intended. The strike shortened 1987 season saw Marino continue his excellent play when he actually played that is. The Dolphins finished the season 8-7 and seven, but that includes three strike games with scabs. In Marino's 12 starts he went 7-5 and five and had a 16 game pace of 4,327 yards and 35 touchdowns. The offense was still great as they finished 7th in points per game while the defense was once again below average, finishing 16th in points per game allowed. The Dolphins barely missed the playoffs for several reasons. They blew huge leads in the season opening road loss to New England 21-7 and a 21-0 lead in a home 34-31 overtime loss to Buffalo and threw up a clunker in a de facto playoff game in the last week of the season, a 24-10 home loss to New England. Much like with Drew Brees, it's difficult to gauge how much blame Marino deserves since he was the only thing standing between the Dolphins being respectable and being a bottom feeder. The 1988 season was a mess for both Miami and Marino individually. Well, at least relatively in Marino's case. He led the NFL in passing yards with 4,434 and threw 28 touchdowns, but he also threw 23 interceptions and the Dolphins offense was below average, finishing 17th in points per game in addition to their shitty defense, 24th in points per game allowed. The team finished 6-10, but not your usual 6-10. There were several losses which totally fall on the defense, such as 44-30 and 38-34 losses to New York and a 31-28 loss to Indianapolis. Yet there were also several losses where the Dolphins offense completely failed to show up, such as a 15-13 loss to Indianapolis, a 9-6 loss to the Bills, and a 6-3 loss to the Patriots, which featured three missed field goals. It's notable to mention that the Dolphins kickers finished the season with a putrid 52.2% on field goals, which was well below the league average of 71.7%. Also, by this time, the divisional rival Buffalo Bills were emerging as one of the NFL's elite, in large part due to their excellent drafting. While the Dolphins had regressed around Marino due to missing on high draft picks such as Lorenzo Hampton, John Bosa, Eric Humero, and their upcoming 1989 first-round pick, Sammy Smith. 1989 saw Miami miss the playoffs for the fourth straight season, finishing 8-8 eight eight after starting out a strong 7-4. Marino had his worst statistical season of his career to that point, falling just short of 4,000 yards and throwing 24 touchdowns to 22 interceptions with a 76.9 passer rating. The Dolphins' offense finished 15th in points per game and 22nd in points per game allowed. While Marino had his shortcomings, the Dolphins' disgustingly bad rushing attack was the bigger culprit for their inability to finish
finished drives. The team averaged a league worst 3.3 yards per carry, in addition to blowing a 7-point fourth quarter lead in a 40-33 loss to the Jets and an 11-point fourth quarter lead in a 27-24 loss to the Bills on opening weekend. Unlike 1988, however, there weren't any losses where the defense did its job, as in all eight losses, the team gave up at least 26 points. Keep in mind, this was when the league average points per game was much lower than it is today at just 20.6. Marino, despite his worst ever season to this point, led four game-winning drives to keep the team's record from being even worse. Still, Marino's production had taken a noticeable dip for two straight years, and while he was still one of the league's best quarterbacks, he was no longer the wonderkind who was putting up goat-type numbers. 1990 saw the Dolphins finally return to the playoffs after a four-year hiatus with a 12-4 record. This was in large part due to their defense improving dramatically to fourth in points per game allowed. The team's offense continued to be just okay, finishing 14th in points per game. Marino threw for quote-unquote just 3,563 yards and 21 touchdowns in 16 starts, but he also cut down big time on his interceptions, throwing just 11. The ground game, however, continued to be disgustingly bad, finishing 26th in yards per carry. Despite the Dolphins' great record, they failed to win their division as the 13-3 Buffalo Bills earned the crown as well as a first-round bye. It should be noted that the Dolphins' four losses on the season came to very good teams. The eventual Super Bowl champion 13-3 New York Giants, the playoff-bound 10-6 Washington Redacted, the aforementioned 13-3 eventual AFC champion Buffalo Bills, and eventual 12-4 AFC runner-up Los Angeles Raiders. After a thrilling 17-16 win over the Kansas City Chiefs in the wildcard round at home, which saw Marino throw two fourth-quarter touchdown passes to overcome a 16-3 fourth-quarter deficit, the Dolphins traveled to Buffalo for a divisional round showdown with their hated rivals. The Dolphins' elite defense completely shit its pants, giving up 44 points in a 44-34 season-ending loss. The Dolphins at one point in the fourth quarter made it a 30-27 game, but in the end, Jim Kelly threw for 339 yards and three touchdowns, while Thurman Thomas ran for 117 yards and two touchdowns. The Bills put up almost 500 yards of offense. Marino, for his part, fought valiantly, throwing for 323 yards, three touchdowns, and even running for another. But the Bills and their famed K-Gun offense were just too much. Even though the 90s Bills have become a meme today for losing four straight Super Bowls, they were an absolutely dominant team in the class of the AFC during Marino's prime years, which is an extremely overlooked aspect of his lack of Super Bowl rings slash chances. The 1991 season saw Marino earn another Pro Bowl berth due to his 3,970 yards, 25 touchdowns, and 85.8 passer rating. All elite numbers in those days. He also threw just 13 interceptions. The Dolphins offense finished 6th in points per game, but was once again held back by a shitty defense that finished 24th in points per game allowed. Overall, the team finished 8-8 eight and, eight and missed the playoffs for the 5th time in 6 years. The running game continued to be the biggest Achilles heel for Miami, both offensively and defensively. They finished just 21st in yards per carry on offense and were a league worst defensively in yards per carry allowed. Despite this, the team blew 4th quarter leads in half of their 8 losses. A 24-21 lead to the Bills in Week 1, a 13-10 lead in Week 8 versus Houston, which saw aforementioned draft bust Sammy Smith brutally fumble on the opponent 1-yard line late with a chance to win the game, a 23-10 lead to the lowly Chargers in Week 16, and a 2017 lead to the New York Jets in Week 17, which saw a go-ahead touchdown drive led by Marino with 45 seconds left get wasted. This team easily and probably should have been in the playoffs with a 9-7 or 10-6 record, but the defense continued to collapse at the worst possible times. Marino was no longer a young pup at this point, and the clock was beginning to tick ever so slightly. 1992 saw Miami return to the playoffs after finishing 11-5. Marino was once again named to the Pro Bowl after leading the league in passing yards and throwing for 24 touchdowns. For what it's worth, he also led the league with six game-winning drives. Miami's offense finished 8th in points per game, and the defense finished 11th in points per game allowed, although the ground game continued to be porous for Miami. Winning the AFC East and getting a first-round bye was huge, as was the team dismantling San Diego in the divisional round 31 to nothing to set up a home AFC Championship game with those pesky Buffalo Bills. The Bills were back in the AFC Championship game despite having to start backup quarterback Frank Reich the previous two weeks, which included the infamous 32-point comeback against Houston. Both teams were sloppy early on as 
the first quarter ended in a 3-3 stalemate. Buffalo then started to pull away, putting up 23 unanswered points to take a 26-3 lead at one point in the fourth quarter before Miami added a garbage time touchdown pass from Marino and another Buffalo field goal to reach the final score, a 29-10 win for Buffalo. The Dolphins committed five turnovers, two of which were interceptions from Marino and three of which were fumbles, including one on a kickoff to start the second half. Marino's final numbers were bad, throwing two interceptions and a 56.5 passer rating, although he had multiple incredible deep passes dropped that could have made this a much different game. He was also sacked four times by Buffalo's elite defensive line and his running game was, unsurprisingly, non-existent. Much like their last AFC Championship game lost to New England in 1985, this was a total team failure for Miami, and it would end up being the closest Marino ever got to going back to a Super Bowl. Through just over four games, 1993 looked like it could be Marino's best season since 1987. Unfortunately for Marino and the Dolphins, he sustained a torn Achilles in their fifth game versus Cleveland. Marino was never mobile in the first place, but this injury would make him even more of a statue moving forward. The Dolphins went 4-1 and in Marino's five starts, and even started the season at 9-2 and before losing their last five games to finish 9-7 and and miss the playoffs. 1994 would end up being Dan Marino's last great statistical season in terms of value, as he threw for almost 4,500 yards and 30 touchdowns to lead the Dolphins to a 10-6 record and AFC East title. The team's offense was elite, finishing third, while the defense was, you guessed it, below average, finishing 17th in points per game allowed. There was plenty of blame to go around for the Dolphins' only, quote-unquote, winning 10 games. The defense deserves the blame for a 42-31 loss to Buffalo and 38-35 loss to Minnesota, while Marino's offense deserves more of the blame for several close losses, such as a 17-14 loss to Chicago, which saw a blocked 45-yard field goal as time expired, a 16-13 overtime loss to Pittsburgh, and a 10-6 loss to Indianapolis, where the offense had first and goal at the two-yard line late in the fourth quarter, but couldn't punch it in. Still, the team and Marino extracted some revenge for Super Bowl 19 against Joe Montana and Kansas City in the wildcard round in a 27-17 win. They would then go on the road to face the eventual AFC champion San Diego Chargers in what would be one of the biggest heartbreaking losses in the Marino era. Marino came out on fire in the first half, throwing three touchdown passes to take a 21-6 lead going into halftime. But the second half was when the wheels fell off. The Dolphins gave up a safety on a run play to make it 21 to 8 and then allowed a 24 yard touchdown run to make it 21 to 15. The offense is stalled until San Diego took a 22 21 lead off of a touchdown with 35 seconds left. Marino then led a drive that set up the team with a 48 yard field goal attempt to win the game, but kicker Pete Stoyanovich missed it. San Diego controlled the ball for almost the entire third quarter and several dumb Miami penalties halted their next two drives before Marino's last drive which ended with the missed field goal. It's tough to blame Marino for this loss. Not every quarterback is fortunate enough to have a kicker make their clutch 48-yard field goals in the playoffs. The Dolphins made the playoffs in 1995, although they underachieved with just a 9-7 record. Marino missed two games, but was named to the Pro Bowl for the ninth and final time of his historic career. He was on a 16-game pace for almost 4,200 yards and 27 touchdowns. The offense finished 7th, while the defense finished 10th. Pretty good balance, which makes the 9-7 record more disappointing. Miami lost the two games. Marino sat out by a combined four points, but they also had several close losses with Marino, including a loss to Indianapolis, where good old Pete Stoyanovich missed a game-winning 49-yard field goal attempt as time expired. Marino did lead several clutch drives to win close games against Atlanta and Cincinnati, however, and barely squeak into the playoffs, where they would once again get to face their old nemesis Buffalo in the wildcard round. Buffalo, at this point, wasn't the same powerhouse as they were in the early 90s, but they were still formidable. They scored on four of their first five drives to take a 24-0 lead, while the Dolphins wouldn't put points on the board until the fourth quarter when the game was already out of reach. The final score of 37-22 makes the game seem much closer than it actually was, as most of Miami's yards and all of their points came in garbage time during the fourth quarter. Buffalo racked up 536 yards, including 341 on the ground. Marino threw for over 400 yards and two touchdowns, but he also had three interceptions and couldn't get the offense going earlier.
year. Still, when your defense gives up 37 points and 536 yards, it's not all his fault. This was another team failure by Miami in what would end up being the last game in Don Shula's legendary career. 1996 was the beginning of the Jimmy Johnson era in Miami, and it would be tumultuous as he and Marino would repeatedly clash over how to handle the offense. Marino would end up missing effectively four games in 1996, which the Dolphins went 1-3 and three in. Overall, the team went 8-8 eight and eight and missed the playoffs. They were 13th in points per game and 17th in points per game allowed, a truly mediocre team across the board. Marino's numbers and efficiency were still excellent, but at 35 years old, he wasn't capable of taking over games the way he used to, and the team's offense completely no-showed in back-to-back 17-7 losses to Oakland and the New York Giants late in the year to end any hope the team had at making the playoffs. 1997 was similar to 1996. The Dolphins were a pretty mediocre team across the board, but unlike the previous year, they finished 9-7 and and made the playoffs as a wild card. Marino started all 16 games and led the league in pass attempts, but threw for just 16 touchdowns and had to leave two games early due to injury. Both games Miami lost, including an inexcusable 9-6 loss to Buffalo. The season also saw the team blow a 15-point fourth quarter lead in a 36-33 overtime loss to Chicago and a two-point loss to New England. Still, Marino led three game-winning drives and his efficiency on a per-dropback basis was well above average. He looked like he still had enough left in the tank for another Super Bowl run until the playoffs. In the wildcard round against the Patriots, Marino completely shit his pants, completing just 39.5% of his passes, throwing two interceptions, one of which was returned for a pick six and getting sacked four times. He had a passer rating of just 29.2 and the team only mustered three points in a brutal 17-3 loss. The Dolphins' defense did its part, holding New England's offense to just 10 points. This is one of the few times the blame falls squarely on Marino's shoulders, and he had no excuse. The 1998 Dolphins finished 10-6 and and made the playoffs again, and in a bit of a role reversal, it was largely thanks to their elite defense and not their Hall of Fame quarterback. The defense finished first in points allowed per drive, while the offense was a disappointing 20th in points per drive. Marino had nice counting stats, throwing for almost 3,500 yards and 23 touchdowns, but he averaged a career-worst 6.5 yards per attempt and was average in terms of efficiency metrics. The team also struggled to finish off games, blowing a 24-14 lead versus Buffalo, a 23-19 lead versus New England, and a 21-14 lead versus Jacksonville all in the fourth quarter to prevent them from finishing with a better record. Still, they earned a home playoff game in the wildcard round versus the Buffalo Bills. This was the fourth and final time Marino would face Buffalo in the playoffs, and he would finally defeat them, rallying the troops to a 24-17 win to earn a divisional round matchup versus the absolutely loaded Denver Broncos, the defending Super Bowl champions and also soon-to-be repeat champs. The game followed the same script as most of Marino's playoff losses. The opponent jumped out to a huge lead early while the Dolphins' offense struggled. Due to the large deficit, Marino was forced to make risky throws, impacting his stats to make him look a little worse than he actually was. In this case, the Broncos scored touchdowns on their first three drives and ended up jumping out to a 21-3 halftime lead. The final score ended up being 38-3 after the Broncos capped off the game with a 79-yard fumble return touchdown. This was another team failure by Miami, as much like in 1990, their elite defense again collapsed come playoff time, giving up 424 yards, including 250 on the ground. Let's be real here. Denver was the better team, and even if Marino had played excellent, I'm not sure Miami would have won. Still, you would have liked to have seen Marino's offense generate more points. 1999 would end up being the last season in Dan Marino's historic career, and he was smart to hang it up, as it was obvious he had hit the proverbial cliff. In just 10 full games, he threw 12 touchdowns and 17 interceptions, and the team went just 4-6. and six. The defense was once again very good, finishing 8th in points allowed per drive, while the offense remained mediocre. Still, though, it it's fitting that even a totally washed Marino ended up losing two games where he led his offense to 34 points and 31 points, as he did in a 37-34 loss to Indy and 38-31 loss to the Jets. Based on his play, Marino didn't deserve to make the playoffs, but perhaps as an act of mercy from the football gods, the team went 5-1 without him to give him one last chance at a Super Bowl. Against Seattle in the wildcard round, Marino showed he still had some magic left, as he led an 85 yard go-ahead touchdown drive in the fourth quarter 
to barely squeak by with a 20-17 win. But based on what happened the following week versus Jacksonville in the divisional round, perhaps Marino would have been better off going out in a close loss. It's hard to really put into words how badly the Dolphins got destroyed by the Jaguars in Marino's last game. The final score of 62-7 is bad, but even then it might not do it enough justice. Marino was terrible, and the only thing preventing his stat line from being even worse was a useless touchdown pass right before the end of the first half. Marino played the first half plus one drive in the third before the plug was finally pulled. The Dolphins in total had 19 possessions and scored just seven points. The defense gave up 277 yards and three touchdowns in the air, as well as 257 yards and three touchdowns on the ground. The special teams even gave up a blocked punt. It was most likely the biggest collapse by any team in modern NFL history. It's also a shame such a brilliant player like Marino went out on the receiving end of what is the football equivalent of a Brazzers scene. So, to review, why didn't Dan Marino win any Super Bowls? Much like with other great quarterbacks who didn't win as many rings as you'd expect, the defense played a major factor. His best defenses statistically came both at the beginning of his career and at the very end of his career when he wasn't close to what he was in his prime. He had a below average defense in 9 of his 17 seasons as a starter. He had a bottom 10 defense 4 times and a bottom 5 defense 3 times. On average, his defenses finished a very mediocre 14th in points per game allowed. Another factor was the consistently awful ground support he had virtually his entire career, and he played in an era where the ground game was much more vital than it is nowadays. Only 3 times in 16 years did Marino have a top 10 ground game in terms of yards per carry. 12 times he had a below average ground game, and in 11 of his 16 seasons, the team finished 20th or worse in yards per carry. Overall, his running support finished, on average, 21st in yards per carry throughout his career. Then we have the Buffalo Bills factor. As I mentioned before, having a divisional rival emerge as a title contender for the better part of a decade, 1988 to 1993, that coincided with Marino's physical prime years absolutely has an impact on Super Bowl chances, most notably due to either not winning the division, having to play an extra playoff game, or missing the playoffs entirely because of one or two more losses against said title contender. What is interesting about Marino, however, is the lack of close playoff losses. Of his 10 career playoff losses, only 1983 versus Seattle and 1994 versus San Diego were one-score games. His average playoff loss was by 19.5 points. This means many team failures, but one of the biggest trends in Marino's playoff losses were the offense starting slowly, as the Dolphins scored just 23 points total in the first quarter of their 10 playoff losses with Marino. That equates to just 2.3 points per quarter, which, over the course of a full game, is just 9.2 points per game. It's impossible to say exactly how much blame Marino deserves for these slow starts, but he obviously deserves some of the blame. In the few times Marino was in a close playoff game, he was very good in the fourth quarter, which is ironic considering what happens late in a close game is what people normally judge a QB's clutchness on. The biggest missed opportunities in Marino's career are 1983, 1984, 1985, 1992, and 1994. But even if Marino had made more Super Bowls, I doubt he would have been favored to win any of them. In 1983, he would have had to go against the 14-2 historically great offense of the Washington Redacted. In 1984, he faced the historically dominant 15-1 49ers and got crushed. In 1985, he would have faced the legendary Bears defense again, which is obviously not easy to defeat two times in one season. In 1992 and 1994, he would have had to face historically dominant and more well-rounded Cowboys and 49ers teams. Of those five years, I give him the best chance to win in 1983, his rookie year, due to the fact that that Washington team shitting its pants in the actual 1983 Super Bowl against the Raiders. Unfortunately, we'll never know. Regardless, Marino was certainly good enough to win multiple Super Bowls if he had been blessed with better support on defense and on the ground. I don't think he is the best quarterback ever due to his lack of mobility and somewhat disappointing production after 1987, but he's probably the most fun quarterback to watch ever due to his extremely arrogant style of play and ability to make tight window throws with regularity. 